All right. And where's the bathroom? I gotta upgrade the bathroom here. I really need to take a shit. What? There's no fucking bathroom? Okay, guys. Nick Meister here, there. and I'm gonna show another I've been tracking the engineer's online presence. thing from Blacklist. Six of their traffic passed through Splinter one choke cell. point. A privately owned offshore data hub. Can we tap it virtually? They're too good for that. We need to do it the hard way and do it clean. Okay. What's the site? Just off the English coast, it's a converted sea fort. The guy who owns it is making millions hosting this kind of stuff. Oh, sounds lucrative. So go in, plant a trace, get out. Without being spotted, or his people will wipe everything. So, here's a convenient setup for a stealth-only mission. Apparently, all our bitching and moaning about conviction actually uh, pushed the people to make a game that was actually more stealth-based, which is nice. So this stage coming up is one that's strictly stealth, and if we get an alert, then it's game over. Kind of like Metal Gear, extreme hard mode, that kind of thing. Okay, Hawkins C4 in the English Channel. And I wonder if... Here's the setup. Okay. You'll need to be careful on your approach. I wonder if these people are actually engineer agents, or if they're just security guards hired by the guy who owns the site. Everything's relative. Now, access points for the data feeds are in the top levels of the structure. It's mostly apartments up there, but you should find what you need. Now, I have played the second stealth mission, um, and uh, this one, by comparison, is really easy. I mean, my god. The second one coming up is a huge pain in the ass. So, uh... We can do all sorts of things here. We can sneak around on the ledge. I'm not really sure how he's grabbing on near those boxes, but hey, he's, he's Sam Fisher. You can shoot out the lights. Of course, that's gonna attract attention and make noise. Huh, kind of expected that guy to come down here, but he doesn't seem to be particularly interested in that. So this is what happens when you piss off the bus. And I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but hey. So, even though this is a strictly a stealth mission, you can kill people if you want. You can choke them out, you can kill them. As long as the enemy doesn't get a shot off. They can see bodies, they can see dead bodies. But as long as you don't fire an unsilent shot, and as long as they don't find, fire a shot, um, there's nothing to worry about. I'm shooting out more lights. I, uh, I was hoping that Sam Fish could, you know, jump onto that, that lifted bridge, but he doesn't seem to be interested in doing that. So I head back here. And at this point, I was still trying to figure out how to use the goggles properly. I wasn't sure how to flip them on and off. And, uh, I'm really trying to figure out how to get these damn goggles off so I can head through the door here. Eventually, I figured out that it's the F key. I think the game tells me that after the fact. There we go. Ah, there it goes. Finally tells me. So, one thing I've noticed about this game, one thing that I really like, is that the developers took the time to put in one-way doors. And if you don't know what I mean, what I mean is a door opens one way. There's no double door, double side, um, you know, double door bullshit. Um, like in, uh, like in the Hitman series, where every door seems to be a, a double, double hinged door that can open either way. 
The only time I've really seen doors like that is in a kitchen. Okay. So here's the first router. In the showroom, Grim. I'm hacking the router now. Whenever Sam's lights glow like that, it means he's in darkness. It doesn't mean you're invinci you're invisible, but as long as the enemies aren't too close, Everything they won't be able out. to see you. One down, two to go. And I'm heading over here, hoping that I can get through another window, but, uh... No. Actually, I think this pipe over here on the left is something you can climb up, but... I'd, for some reason, I didn't notice that when I was playing the first time. So I head back. No, can't go in there. I head back over here. Have you got anything? <laughs> well, Sam grunts and grimaces a lot when he's hanging on things, but I don't think he ever actually gets tired. There's no grit meter. So, uh, these guys did find a couple of bodies I left out front, I think. Which is why they're all looking around. Yeah, come over here, you. There. Have a concussion. And, uh, that's gonna make our job a little more difficult, but not much. Since, uh, like I said before, the first stage is, uh is easy in comparison to what's to come ahead. Now, the router B is pretty heavily guarded and also near... Well, it's heavily guarded, so I'm heading for C first. There's a dog sniffing around that's got me nervous. And I'm not sure what these guys are hooming about. I think they might have glanced me through the window there. Now, this sniper up there is pretty dangerous, and he's also near, uh... He's also near the router we need to hack. I'm not going to try to go up there myself. I'm just going to use the tri-rotor. It's a fun little device. Okay. Here we go. Gotta keep in mind that the tri-rotor can be seen by enemies, so you want to make sure that you stay out of their line of sight. Don't want to get too close to the sniper. There we go, he's knocked out cold. And with the sniper gone, we're pretty much safe on the ground, but I've got three of these sticky shocks left, so I'm going to use them while I got them down and he's down there we go um, another thing to keep in mind when using the tri rotor is that when the enemies see it when they shoot it down they have this uncanny ability to find where you are it doesn't make a lot of sense but it does add a little extra incentive not to get caught with the tri rotor Reminds me a little of uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, where they gave you the little robot uh, that Otacon gave Snake. I never used it myself. Now, this is my first time playing, so I moved the tri-rotor close to Sam, thinking that he might have to physically pick it up, but that's not the case. Uh, all you have to do is turn it off, and it magically goes back into your, uh, your inventory. And I'm still taking cover, even though there's no one around. I think I'm afraid that maybe if I got caught directly in that light, it would, uh, it would cause some sort of alert, but that's not the case. So here's another router up here in the lighthouse. Kind of strange. That was fast. Data tap is active. Just one more to go. Gonna tap that data. Gonna tap that data hard. Actually, I like to say data, myself. And data has a much nicer ring to it, I think. Data just sounds too sharp. There we go. The thing about stealth games is that 
In my opinion, enemies are too sensitive to sound. I don't mean that their hearing should be really bad, I just mean that they shouldn't jump at every every sound of a, a footstep. You know, because if there are multiple guards in a stage, why would a, a guard, uh, you know, hear a footstep somewhere in a room where there are other guards and then assume that there's an enemy there? Yeah, that just doesn't make any sense when you think about it. Here's a dog. Um, I don't remember if I kill it or avoid it. But he can smell me because he's barking. And I'm um, looking for that last router. And uh, no, we're actually out outdoors again, I think, aren't we? Yeah. Yep, got turned around. So, uh, after I'm done looking at that life preserver, I'm going to turn back around and head back inside. Moving to our next station. There we go. How long has that door been open? Enemies do comment on open doors, which is interesting. Um, this guy's got a helmet on, so... We couldn't headshot him in one try if we wanted to. And, uh, the only thing left is that dog, which, uh, I don't know if, oh, no, my, I'm, my mistake, there's one other guard left. I was gonna say, I don't know if dogs can set off alerts. I mean, they can definitely alert enemies to your position, but. <laughs> and I just knocked that dog right out. There we go. So, uh, hmm. Get the service. Do I take this guy out? Or do I ignore him? It's been about a week since I played this, so... Have you got anything? Hmm. He's done for. Okay, and I think that's all the guards uh, in the game. I mean, not in the game. In, in this, in the fort. So, uh, there are these lasers here that will trip an alarm that will end our level. So we don't want to walk through those. Instead, we gotta jump through this window here. It's kind of a big oversight when you think about it, security-wise. I mean, there are two windows here with no locks or bars or anything. There we go. And through here are more lasers, but... They're much more easily circumvented, with a little timing. This one can just be walked under. There we go. And, I gotta wait for these two. And, for some reason, that beam didn't set off the alarm. I'm not sure if that's because all the enemies in the level are incapacitated, or because I wasn't in there long enough. Not really sure. So here's a tricky one. Um, but just a little patience, you can get through it. And there we go. Nice. Found the cell phone. Looking at it now. Found the cell phone. I wonder how he knows to hack that particular phone. Well, apparently, hacking phones takes longer than dropping data taps. Green. Your next move is to get out of there. Quiet or noisy? Keep it quiet and get to the dock for exfiltration. Roger that. On the move. So, uh... Whoops. Got touched again. <sighs> Here I am looking for the exit. The exit actually is at the very beginning of the stage. I didn't realize that. And you can climb over this wall here. Oh, it's kind of an odd design. But, uh, if you want to skip one whole laser, you can climb over the, over the, the, uh, the wall if you want. And, uh, Sam Fisher closing the door on himself. There we go. Hmm.
No, can't you can't climb across that pipe, huh? Too scared. All right. Just gonna hop on through this window here. I'm not even sure why I'm still crawling around the ground. There's no one left alive. But I guess I'm just playing it safe. Okay, there we go. Upright, walking like a man. What am I doing? Well, there's lots of pictures of, of uh, businessmen with uh, Arab, rich Arab-looking guys, so you know these people are evil. And the exit is right back where we started, which makes sense, I guess. And we just have to wait Head for the boat. Roger that. You're good to go. I'll see you on board. So that was uh, one of Grimm's sneaking missions. The very first one, that is. Played on normal difficulty. And here's a, a very slow, long list of our uh, achievements and things like that. And of course, we don't have any combat assault things, because if we did, we would have failed the mission. Completed in under 80 minutes? Jesus Christ, that's not a very high uh, standard. Alright. So that was Let's Play. Well, Wire not really Let's Play. That was Black. That was Splinter Cell Blacklist, and I'm Nick Meister. See you next time.